I drove here in my minivan. <laughs> that makes it really hard to feel cool, you know? And, and by the way, I used to drive a cool car. And let me tell you, when you drive a sexy vehicle around a hip part of town, you feel like, I'm the wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> you spend a few years driving a Honda Odyssey around a neighborhood called Pleasant Oak, and it becomes, I'm just trying to be more like those dogs on Bluey. <laughs> I have to drive a minivan, I have to live in the suburbs, because I have six kids. <laughs> All right, well, you guys might be interested in my masterclass on responsible family planning. It's 20 seconds long, and it's called Just Don't. It's so funny, because I, I think back to when I was younger, people said that I should not have kids. They were very rude about it. They're like, Jen, you have no maternal instincts. You never will. You running a house with actual children in it? Oh, that'd be a disaster. And now I have this big family, and I think back on that, and I'm like, they were so right. <laughs> How did they know? <laughs> they nailed it. <sighs> no, guys, I had to have six kids. I am an only child. My husband is an only child. My father was an only child. My family tree was becoming a stump. <laughs> Your annual family reunion should not fit at one table at Applebee's. <laughs> and we went for it. We had six babies in eight years. I said that at a comedy club one time and a guy with face tattoos pushes through the crowds afterward. He had piercings all over his face too. And he runs up to me and he says, hey, I really respect your alternative lifestyle. <laughs> Let me tell you, uh, when you announce your second pregnancy, people say, are you trying to get a boy and a girl? You announce your sixth pregnancy in eight years, and people say, are you trying to get a reality show on TLC? What is wrong with you? <laughs> so my husband and I just had a big anniversary. <laughs> yep. We have now been married 20 years. <laughs> now, those of you who have been married for a while know that as the years go on, you have to be intentional to keep the spice alive. So, for our 20th anniversary, I finally let my husband live his ultimate fantasy. I told him that for a whole night, I would take any constructive criticism he had for me. <laughs> okay, now you guys are pretty young, but when I say this in front of middle-aged crowds, there's always a couple 60-year-old guys in the back who are like, that is so hot. <laughs> They're like, is there a place where I can just watch that on the internet? Like, that's what I'm into in this phase of life. <laughs> no, that was a wild night. <laughs> I haven't spoken to him since then, but... <laughs> Now, and now, this is the point talking about kids and marriage where a lot of people would make graphic jokes about how those children were conceived, how they were brought into the world. I will not be doing that because my husband is a very private person. He would have you know that we reproduce asexually. <laughs> like amoeba. He is so uptight about this kind of thing that he will not even send me any flirty texts. I try, I try. A couple weeks ago, I texted him, hey there, looking pretty sexy today. He replied, received. <laughs> With a period. I said, what are you worried about? We're married. He said, you're not thinking. What about this? What if we got into legal trouble and our phones got subpoenaed and our texts to one another were read aloud in open court? <laughs> I said, okay, if that scenario played out, we would have a lot bigger issues than a couple of eggplant emoji. He hesitated to ask me out when we first met because I'm three inches taller than he is. And he said, I know a lot of women don't, don't want to date shorter guys. I said, oh, pff, 
When I was single, I was goal-oriented. I said, look, if I can just find a man who is loving, who is supportive, who respects my boundaries by not asking me how much money I spent at Target, I don't care if he played one of the munchkins in The Wizard of Oz. I'll stuff that man into a baby Bjorn. Take him out for a date night. We'll have a lovely time. You don't have to be able to ride a roller coaster with your spouse. It's not like a requirement, you know, for a good marriage. Um, People often comment, they say, Jen, your husband is so supportive of your career. And he really is because he doesn't want to work anymore. (laughs) I have a theory that on a deep caveman level, it is very important to men to be the primary providers for their wives and children for about 15, 20 years, and then they're out. I see these young wives on Instagram who are like, my husband completely provides financially for our entire family because for us, it's a sacred journey. I'm like, girl, you're in a relay race. You just don't know it. That man's going to hit his 43rd birthday, run up to you, throw the baton at you, be like, this is your problem now. I'm out. This was surprising to me because my husband went to Yale. When I was dating him, I thought, man, if I can just get a ring on it, the minute we say I do, poof, all of my financial problems disappear. Single ladies, I need to inform you. Men have discovered work-life balance. So if that's the plan you want to get on, you're going to need to go for old money. A couple years ago, he sat me down and he said, Jen, you stayed home with our children for so many years. Let it be my turn now. I said, okay, so I stayed home with them when they were a bunch of screaming gremlins. Now you're willing to stay home with them when they are a jovial brood of free bartenders and chauffeurs. And we got a lot of kids, so he's got like two dedicated kids just to make his queso. You know when I should have known this was coming? A while back, he started sending me a lot more girl boss memes on Instagram. It would be like, Girls can do anything. Careers are for girls. A girl could support six kids while her husband goes sailing with his friend Scott. I was like, is he making these? I I will say he is a very frugal man. So much so that he convinced our children that there's a very special elf at the North Pole. This elf is in charge of quality control. And he puts his special bright orange little sticker on only the finest toys. And his name is Clarence. The kids would open their toys at Christmas and he'd be like, oh, darn it, did they misspell Clarence's name again? (laughs) Ha ha, oh. But Clarence is killing it. He is almost as good as the Easter Bunny's assistant rollback. (sighs) He's like, these guys are incredible. 
I learned the hard way. Do not let your very frugal spouse get gifts for the tooth fairy to give. (laughs) My daughter had lost a tooth. It was time to set out the tooth fairy gifts. And I said, all right, what did you get? I knew it would be something from the discount bin at Walmart. (laughs) So he pulls out his bag. The first thing he has in there, I I, I swear to you this is true. Hand on my Bible app, I swear. (laughs) It's a floppy rubber rat. I I had so many questions, starting with like, where does the market demand for this product come from? You know, who was like, our home is not complete without, I I don't know. I was like, okay, what else did you get? So he pulled out a bottle that had liquid in it. And I said, oh, is it a fragrance? He said, sort of. It was deer lore. Deer come to our neighborhood and my daughter likes to see them. And he's like, look, check it out. It says authentic female deer urine, guaranteed to attract a mate. Kind of genius, right? I said, I, I just have to take a moment. Um, so this is where our house is now. The tooth fairy is bringing pee. And it's for hunters. So on the back, there was a picture of an angry buck with rifle crosshairs over his little deer face. I said, this is literally the worst tooth fairy gift in the world. But it was 11 p.m. and I didn't have any better ideas, so that is what we left. (laughs) Imagine my daughter rolling over that morning. She's like, oh, what did the, oh, like, it's, she sees what looks like a dead rat (laughs) and a bottle of animal urine with a deer that's about to be shot on it. I don't think she thought the tooth fairy came. I think she thought the mafia came. <laughs>